It turns out there's more than meets the eye when it comes to Hoxies. R&D has provided us with some brand new equipment known as the Drillivator. And with it, we are able to descend to depths that we never thought were possible. Arriving to a place that is so beautiful that I have to take a screenshot every time I'm down here. The crystals and the reflections are a sight to behold. Not only that, it seems that we have some new visitors that we've never seen before and we're not exactly sure if they're from Hoxies or not. Hey there miners, my name is Lugos and I'd like to welcome you to Season 5 of Deep Rock Galactic, Drilling Deeper. In Season 5, we are introduced with a brand new mission type, two new secondary objectives, brand new enemies to keep you on your toes, brand new overclocks for every dwarf, featuring one for every primary weapon, a brand new seasonal event that will introduce you to new enemies that you've never seen before and you can't help but question if they're from Hoxies or not. We also have a couple of brand new warnings and anomalies to really spice up the game. There's also some really nice features with the wardrobe because, of course, your wardrobe is ever so growing, and of course, you do need a way to organize your wardrobe. A brand new opportunity to make your Hazard 5 missions a lot more dangerous to earn more rewards in the form of a custom difficulty type of setting. And of course, the fun doesn't stop there as we have a whole new 100 levels of Battle Pass rewards to go through as well. This time around, it seems like we've gotten the rock pox under control. As you look around the space rig, it looks like the infection has gone away. But now we have something new in the space rig to look at and poke our fingers on the glass to piss off management, and it's always fun to poke things that you never know about because you never know what could happen. Coming over to the mission control, and it's not as dire looking as it was before. Because as of right now, we have a new dire situation to focus on. To start out, let's introduce you to the brand new mission type known as Deep Scan. To skip out on boring you with a bunch of information overloaded into your head, we'll keep it nice and simple just like this as we see in the Miner's Manual. In Deep Scan, step one is to locate the resonance crystals. Use the brand new telemetric rangefinder to locate crystals hidden beneath the ground of the caves. Your terrain scanner will be unable to help you in this mission type. It'll glow blue when you're far away from a resonance crystal or yellow when you're getting closer to a crystal. There's also a very handy little arrow pointing upwards, down, or facing as a diamond if you are on the same elevation as a crystal. Drillers will of course be helpful in this mission because of course they can shape the earth around them. You'll know when you're by a resonance crystal when you hear this very unique distinctive sound. Once you hear that, it's fairly straightforward to dig it up. This is fairly straightforward as you'll hold down the action button on the resonance crystal to call down a resonance scanner. Once in place, moving on to step 3 is to connect the cable. Much like utilizing the fuel cells to connect to the drop pod to fuel it up, you'll then need to connect the cable to the top of the resonance crystal to begin the scan. Once all resonance crystals have been located and have been linked up to the resonance scanner, depending on the longevity of the mission, you will then move on to step 4, boarding the drill elevator. Ensure all of your teammates are ready and prepared and make sure you grab ammo while you can because you will be unable to call resupply pods while on the drill elevator. And once all teammates are ready, go ahead and activate all the tracks on the drill elevator and push the big red button to begin the descent. And as such, as you begin your descent, be ready to fight the horde. And as you descend and fight for your life, you will then be required to maintain the drill elevator's tracks, otherwise it will hinder your progress. All four of the tracks have health indicators flashing from green to yellow to red depending on how well they are being maintained. There will also be inevitable moments of hitting layers of super dense rock, which will hinder your progress only temporarily. This will also be the same case if one of the claw tracks on the drill elevators goes out of commission. So make sure to keep an eye on the claw tracks and always make sure that they're well maintained. Fighting for your life when you're hitting a layer of super dense rock is always a tricky situation, so make sure you watch out for sting tails. And finally, as you now arrive to the Morkite Geode, feel free to take a screenshot because, my god, this place is honestly kind of breathtaking. But anyways, now we can begin step 6, collecting the Morkite Seeds. You'll be able to crack open the outer shell of the Morkite Seeds, of course, easily with melee attacks such as your pickaxe, or of course, being the dwarves that we are, we always use our power attacks. You will then need to deposit all the seeds in Molly, and then as soon as you have all the Morkite Seeds collected, then you will need to call the Extraction Pod. The Trot Pod will be unable to accompany you down into the Morkite Geo that you are below, so instead you'll need to grab a pair of special jet boots to get yourself out of the deep hole that you've dug with the drill elevator. These jet boots are fortunately a much more improved formula from the other jet boots that you've seen in Season 4, as they will be able to cool down very quickly as you make your way up the tunnel that has been created by the drill elevator. And as such, very straightforward, get to the escape pod and get home in time for sandwiches and beers. 
Now, of course, with new depths come new threats when it comes to Hoxies. And we will, of course, start off with a brand new friend that has come to the Glyphid family, known as the Glyphid Stalker. The Glyphid Stalker is a cunning predator that utilizes camouflage in its chitin exoskeleton to render it practically invisible. While similar cloaking abilities have been observed amongst other alien species, such as, of course, Terminus Stalkers, as you've seen in Helldivers 2. The Stalker relies on ambushing players, and you'll be able to know if a Stalker is hunting you down by listening for its unique sound effect. And it is best practice that if you suspect a stalker within your immediate vicinity to practice grouping up to take it down together. Because the stalker has a very nasty attack if it catches up to you. When the stalker catches up to you and deals damage, it will disable your shield. And this is not a simple damage to take your shields down, this is actually a new debuff that the stalker does. It is of course worth noting that pinging a stalker while it's invisible will cause it to uncloak. And of course, dealing enough damage will make the stalker disengage and reposition itself. It would also seem that the Spitball Infector has gotten a new cousin, or brother, as per se, as there is a new breed of Infector known as the Barrage Infector. Unlike its predecessor known as the Spitball Infector, the Barrage Infector has a way nastier attack than shooting just one Acid Mortar. He attacks you with a whole barrage of Acid Projectiles, and if you happen to be unlucky to be caught in this blast, it could potentially one-shot you on higher difficulties or even on lower difficulties. It is worth noting that when the anomaly Glow Gravity is active, the Barrage Infector's projectiles are way slower and they're a lot easier to take down if you so choose to. Its weak point is below its chin, and the tricky thing is that you're not able to see it until the Barrage Infector wakes up. Moving on to another creature that we have never really seen before, it's not Glyphid, Mactera, or even Infector, but it rather seems to be a species of its own. A very invasive sentient plant that spreads across the cave systems, this is known as the Vartex Scale Bramble. And the unique thing about this enemy is that it is unable to be damaged until all the nearby weak points have been destroyed. The weak points can be easily identified by following the stems that go throughout the caves of Hoxies and finding a ratherly large green sack, which almost looks to be as an explosive plant that you may see commonly in the fungus box or of course a magma core. Once all weak spots have been destroyed, you can then destroy the Vartex Scale Bramble as it is very easy to destroy. Now that we've gone through all the new enemies, let's now go through the new anomalies and warnings you'll be able to encounter. Starting off with the warnings, we have a brand new warning called Duck and Cover. And this makes it so that range enemies are way more common than normal enemies that you'll be able to encounter. Now with this warning, this kind of turns the game into a literal living hell because there is more than 10 acid spitters in the instance of the game that I'm running right now. And honestly, I'm looking forward to the YouTube videos that people post on this warning because this is just absolute chaos with the amount of web spitters and acid spitters I was able to get in my instance. It is absolutely crazy. Up next we have Ebonite Infestation. I'm pretty sure you remember the Ebonite Glyphid that you've been able to see from the Ebonite Mutation machine event. This of course makes it so that Ebonite Glyphids will be able to spawn in your normal missions even without the event active. In my instance of the game, they did spawn every two minutes or so, and they seem to really only appear in a cluster of two or maybe less or even a little more. These Ebonite Glyphids are of course immune to all forms of damage except for of course your pickaxe attack and or the drill's drill attacks. And the good news is that when you kill the Ebonite Glyphids, they do have a chance of spawning a pickaxe power which will enhance the recharge timer of your power attack for your pickaxe. Moving on to the two brand new anomalies, we now have Secret Secondary. And essentially this anomaly makes it that a secondary secondary objective, meaning that there's now two secondary objectives will appear in your mission. And it definitely will be worth completing both of these secondary objectives because it will give you a fatter and richer payout when you complete both of them. And the other anomaly is known as Blood Sugar. And this one honestly gives a pretty huge twist to the game. As you're in your mission, you will gradually lose health, and you're gonna need a kill in order to recover health. Fortunately, you can find red sugar within the caves, but the most effective way to get your health back is simply by killing enemies. Once enemies have been killed, they'll drop a chunk of red sugar for you to recover your health back. I'm honestly not sure if I should call this an anomaly or not, because this is probably the most interesting twist I've ever seen on the game yet. And it kind of feels like the game has turned a little bit into Ultra Kill, and honestly, I kind of dig it. Welcome to the brand new secondary objectives that you'll be able to encounter in your missions. One of the newest secondary objectives that have been added into Season 5 is destroying Glyphid Eggs. These are of course much similar to the Glyphid Eggs that you commonly see in Fungus Bogs and or other types of biomes. Management wants you to destroy 40 Glyphid Eggs. This is to ensure of course that the Glyphid population will remain to a minimum. 
and for the other secondary objective that has been added into Season 5, we have an objective of exterminating 16 Ba Barnacles. I'm pretty sure people might call it Baha Barnacles, but I'm calling it Ba, because English, let's be honest, it's very hard to understand sometimes. But this secondary objective is also pretty straightforward. You'll see Ba Barnacles on the ceilings, and all you need to do is shoot them until their health remains to zero, and they will drop down from the ceiling. The satisfying part is watching these barnacles fall to the floor, and then all of a sudden just magically disappear into the floor. And now, the first cherry on the top when it comes to Season 5 is of course a brand new seasonal event. During your missions, you may encounter this strange purple glowing rock. This is how you know that you found the new seasonal objective. For cracking the shell open will reveal a core stone, which is of course a valuable resource you'll need to secure in order to secure bonus XP for the performance pass. To start out, crack the entire surrounding shell of the core stone. Once the entire shell of the core stone has been cracked, the core stone will spring to life. And from there, it'll open up dimensional rifts within the caves of Hoxies. And this is where things will get pretty dicey because it'll also introduce yet another enemy that has been added into the game. They're no Glyphids nor Mectera. These are scientifically known as Crawlers. And these little guys are going to be very well known for speed and agility. This combo alone makes them a considerable threat, especially in numbers. Once the dimensional rifts open up, there will definitely be a lot of Crawlers that'll spawn to overwhelm you. Their weak spot is their head, but it is also covered by a skull plating which will need to be opened in order to damage their weak spot. This can be done by waiting for them to open for a roar, or by shooting off their armor with most notably armor penetrating weapons. And as the crawlers spawn in from the interdimensional portals, you'll need to be able to keep your focus on the core stone, for it has three phases of health. Once one of these damage gates have been fulfilled, it'll encase itself back in its purple stone cocoon, which you will need to break once again in order to initiate damage phase on it again. Doing this successfully about three times, and the core stone is now subdued. And as the core stone dies, all the crawlers will also die with it. So thankfully, there's no need to worry about any straggling crawlers. From there, you'll need to call in a special extraction pot to get the core stone secured, and you can get yourself your performance pass bonus. Now with new threats that have come to Hoxies, there is of course a new way to have fun with your favorite toys. In Season 5, we are introduced with one brand new overclock for every dwarf, featuring every primary weapon. Now for satisfaction purposes, I will provide a small clip showcasing what each overclock provides in terms of its functionality. Mectera Troy Joy eliminated!
combat positions. The swarm is here. Weapon ready. Nice. Okay, I think that covers about everything for new missions, enemies, and or overclocks. So now let's move on to what you can do in the wardrobe. In the wardrobe, there's a pretty neat button that you'll be able to click on, and this will activate a checklist, which is sort of like a vanity search for within your wardrobe. And this will make it way easier to organize if you're looking for specific items within your wardrobe. It goes from as far as goggles, to hair, to hats, to headband, pretty much you name it. It's like trying to find that favorite pair of underwear, except it's now much easier. There's also two brand new weapon war paint sets to collect, and to get these, you'll simply need to get one through a cosmetic matrix core, which is of course done by doing a machine event, completing the weekly core hunt assignment, or by simply completing deep dives. The weapon maintenance page also has more for you to collect, and this is honestly the best way to flex of how much of an expert you are with your weapons. We also have another 100 levels of performance pass cosmetics and swag to collect throughout the caves, featuring of course a brand new cosmetic tree with a new weapon framework which is known as Neotechia. And in Season 5 we are also introduced with unlimited promotional levels. Now you can really show off of how much of a greybeard you are in the mines. Another really neat feature that has been added in as well is that you have the option to turn on past seasons, changing of course from the unseasoned DRG experience all the way up to season 4, which is currently the most recent past season. This is a great opportunity to catch up on past cosmetics that you've not earned from previous seasons, and with it you'll be able to look your best. Oh, also especially, you now have a new opportunity of making your Hazard 5 missions a lot more dangerous. You can make the enemies more aggressive by attacking faster and shooting more projectiles, make yourself take more damage from environmental hazards, friendly fire, and or enemies, make swarms even more hellish, and of course make it so that your enemies are harder to bring down. And on top of all that, we also have some new dance moves within the space rig, and one of them happens to be a twerking emote, and honestly, this feels like an early Christmas gift. Now you can really show management of what it's like to have the whole bakery with you. And with that, the Season 5 Guide will conclude. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, and as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Rock and Stone.